You know, all technology, just because it's old, doesn't necessarily mean it's useless. So <laughs> this video is designed to go out to my system administrators who are throwing out yesteryear's trash, but there's still some use that can be had for yesteryear's trash, probably, maybe, especially if you donate it. So we're gonna talk about the correct and proper way to scrub hard drives in an enterprise, at least using some software and, and that sort of thing, because just because it's old, doesn't mean it's completely useless. So the software that I want to talk about today is Active Kill Disk. It's disk erasure software, and it's made for the enterprise. So when I said that this video is for my system administrators, it's true. But for those of you that are like, Psh, I can write a DD script and a, a hardware notify thing and erase a disk, why would I need software? Ah, young Padawan, you have never had to work in the enterprise. So it turns out that when you go to work for a company, if it's more than like three people, um, you will have to do things that are probably pretty dumb, but uh, you know, you have to follow protocol to make sure that everything actually is completely kosher. And so disk erasure, so you work in an enterprise, so you work in a bank and you've got lots of really sensitive information on a hard drive. Now, Yes, I wrote a script to DD the, the drive and it erases and everything is good. But then it's like, well, well now wait a minute, what about flash-based disks? Because you can't necessarily see all of the flash memory on the disk. So when you erase it, you know, a 500 gigabyte drive might actually be 512 gigabytes. So you've erased 500 gigabytes, but 12 gigabytes was reserved for wear leveling and things like that. Can you be sure that you got it the 12 gigabytes that, that were not there? Can you be sure that you actually erased that data? Similar with, with mechanical hard drives, there can be residual information that is left. So anyway, to make a long story short, there are dozens and dozens of algorithms for erasing data securely from spinning rust. And like the typewriter, spinning rust is quickly becoming obsolete, quickly being replaced by you know, flash and solid state counterparts. And erasing stuff on flash is even more complicated. Enter software, active kill disk. Two reasons you use this in the enterprise. One, you can be sure that it's doing what it's supposed to because it's following the algorithms and things like that. It's really not a lot of work to learn what you need to learn to actually do it yourself. But two, certification, the blame game. Most companies in the world, they have this culture of blame. It's like, this horrible thing has happened, who can we blame for this? So say you work at a bank and say you work in IT and say your responsibility is, is decommissioning old hardware. <laughs> and something happens, like, uh, Bank computer found in dumpster has thousands of records on it. Do you want to be the guy that is like, yeah, I, I wrote a script that uses DD to erase hard drives and I don't know why they would have found the, the thing in the dumpster filled with consumer records. Or do you want to say, no, we totally ran DOD, you know, three pass, whatever. Here is the label, here's the PDF report, here is the other stuff. Well, that's what the Active Kill Disk Enterprise software does. Now you can get less expensive personal versions of it that do really neat things, but the, the claim to fame with this software is that it'll follow whatever algorithm you want, multiple erasure passes, that sort of thing. But it'll also print out a label that you can peel and stick to the drive to say, hey, it's totally erased. But the really great thing about the software is you definitely do not need to buy specialized hardware for it. They do sell it. They sell a drawer that you can stick up to 45 drives in and erase it. But, you know, I'm sure that you've got an old server laying around, uh, you know, something with hot swap bays. Happen to have this ITX Lee and Lee system, which is insanely way overkill. I mean, we're using an ROG motherboard, but the ROG motherboard has hot swap options in the UEFI. You could just as easily use an old Dell PowerEdge you know, server chassis or something like that, anything with hot swap bays. And so this is only a small bit of the uh, hard drives that I have that need to be erased that otherwise could still be used. And so if you, you know, would rather shred your hard drives, well, that's not very nice of you. So you and IT, how do you convince your management that this is a better idea? It's certainly more time consuming to erase a hard drive than to just put it in the industrial chipper shredder. Well, uh, you can get a lot more uh, donation value out of your computers if you donate them. I mean, spinning rust has a lifetime of about five years, give or take. So if you're in the enterprise, you should tell your boss, hey, uh, we've got spinning rust that has been powered on for nearing five years or over five years. Uh, it has reached its design lifetime. It is time to retire that spinning rust. Or maybe you've got some older flash disks. Older flash disks are coming off support and off warranty. If you've got first gen PCI Express 2.0, solid state disks, it's time to rip those out of servers and put them on eBay or you know whatever you wanna do. But you can get a lot more value for the company 
out of donating them, donating them to schools and religious organizations and other nonprofits, charities that, that may be in your area. And if you erase the drives rather than just give them a chassis, they're going to be a lot more likely to accept it. I mean, even Goodwill, which is a, which is a, a, a local thing in the U.S., um, generally will not accept electronics that are not at least functional. So it's like, okay, I've got a computer, but I want to keep my drive. It's like, well, they may not actually take the computer because the computer's not operational without its drive. In the enterprise, the same thing with servers. A lot of it can be specialized equipment. You could be de dealing with serial attached SCSI drives or PCI Express drives instead of, you know, SATA hard drives. So, uh, you know, whatever you want to do, this is a much better option. You can also get a report to give to your boss that looks really cool to say, hey, I totally erased this. You can also set up a chassis so that any drive you shove into it, it's just going to automatically erase it. And you basically, you put it in. Normally it's got a confirm erase all data thing that you have to do. No, you can totally configure it so that when you insert a drive, it'll pop up and say, hey, I found a drive, gonna go ahead and erase it now. And it'll just go to town erasing it. And then it'll beep or whatever when it gets done or print a label, whatever you would like it to do. Save it under report. But you know, it's like when, when they found that computer in the dumpster, you can go to your reports and be like, hey, all the computers that came through my office, here's all the reports, here's all the certification. If something's not right, blame the software. Let's talk for a second about how easy or difficult it is to recover information from an erased disk. And to simplify things, I'm going to talk about spinning rust. So with spinning rust, you know, even if you do one pass and it's a, say zeros, you're going to zero the information, it is still possible to recover information with an electron microscope and a whole bunch of time and money. So like an intelligence service could still probably recover the information that was on your drive. The good news is that you can um, do multiple passes. You can also do multiple passes with random information. Those are some of the algorithms that are offered by this. Now, if you were to do this yourself, you know, uh, cat dev u random to a mechanical drive, you'll find that you even u random is really not quite fast enough on most systems to keep up with a whole bunch of mechanical hard drives. On our little test system here, we're basically keeping up with the maximum uh, throughput that the drives themselves can operate at, even though we're doing four in parallel. And this is on a relatively modest, you know, Z270 chipset. It's easy to imagine that if you've got a server with a proper LSI chipset, you know, a proper LSI SCSI controller, that this software will have no problem keeping up with, uh, with the hardware in terms of like, okay, we're gonna fill it with random information. We're gonna do this as fast and painlessly as possible. It's also true that certain uh, brands of flash drive for erasing those, they're always using encryption on the flash chips. And so when you erase certain kinds of flash drives, it will just blank the place where it keeps the decryption key. If you wanna be sure, of course, you can do that and then overwrite the information just to be sure that nothing is stored. <laughs> but sometimes when you do a you know, full disk erase on a flash disk, it will complete immediately. And the reason for that is because it's erasing those secure keys. Now, this software is a little bit cognizant of those kinds of things, but it's still gonna do three passes. It's still gonna be sure that the slack space, the extra space at the end of a flash drive has been properly erased. So again, those are really nice features for the enterprise. Those are really nice features if you're donating your machines or giving your machines or handing your machines down to somebody else. It's just best practices for data. It's like, oh, I don't care if somebody gets into my stuff. No, you, you do care, trust me. You just, that, that's ignorant, don't, don't even say that. So if you work in the enterprise and you're looking for software to securely erase drives, be they flash, be they mechanical hard drives, be they whatever, you should definitely give Active Kill Disk a look. It is available in a very inexpensive personal editions, but the enterprise editions are a little bit more costly. Basically you pay based on the number of slots that you're gonna use uh, in your equipment. So if you've got you know an old Dell server with eight three and a half inch bays, you can get a license for eight three and a half inch bays and, and pay accordingly. Um, it is really good software for the enterprise. It is actually a good product for the use case that it has. There is actually a use case out there. Now, if you're small time and it doesn't really matter, yeah, absolutely, you can use the uh, you know DD. But they also have a free home version. So if you're using it for not commercial purposes, there are some free things that you can do if you're just a person that's looking to donate your computer and you want to shred all the information on it and be sure that nobody can recover your old tax records or your old whatever it might be. Um, yeah, you can run the, the home version and do that. There's also a bootable USB version. So if you're like, I don't want to wipe these corporate workstations manually by pulling the drive, 
well, just boot off USB and do it that way. Hell, you can even do it through PXC boot, Pixie booting. You can boot off the network and erase the disks that way. It's, it's all supported. It's all pretty well documented. It's all pretty well taken care of. So you've got some options for what you want to do in terms of disk erasure. It's a really neat product. Well, I'm Wendell. I'm going to be resisting the temptation to turn this typewriter into a Model M keyboard mod a la Datamancer. Uh, you can find me hanging out in the forums at Level 1 Techs. I'm signing out, and I'll see you there. Say what you will about typewriters, but this is a pretty secure place to keep your Bitcoin wallet. Hey, better this and give away your old equipment than uh, seeing it turned into fridge decorations, huh?